All right, we're recording. Okay. Past the green. Oh, sorry. See, I didn't I mean, even. This, this, this uh, is honestly, happening every week. I'm starting to take offense. <laughs> no, I call everybody pastor. But you explained that the other two episodes. Yeah, I know, you but still don't. True facts. <laughs> Welcome to Pastor Tech. Pastor Tech, the Disruptive Faith podcast this is episode three episode three this is huge this is a huge blessing um uh, today i think will be a, a interesting episode if you're an entrepreneur or you know someone who's an entrepreneur or you're just really excited about doing anything for jesus i think this will be a great episode for you um or to even share share with them so episode three if you as we said last week if you made it past the first episode, which was a movie, a movie land, and then the second one mm. was longer. Wow, I know. It was. <laughs> then the, the first, you know what? I mean, it, it, it is what it is. If you made it to episode three, uh, you about that life. Yeah. Uh, and we are grateful, and we thank God for you. Um, this has been a blessing because I feel like we we have been getting some good feedback about the podcast mm-hmm. so uh you know i pray that it is really blessing people yeah and that you know everyone listening is enjoying it mm-hmm. right yeah so yeah that's it i'm tacking this is fred uh. <laughs> <laughs> like you wanted me to say fred green i did i'm so used to uh, everybody <laughs> But anyway, we said earlier, I do call everybody pastor. You know, anyway, woo, I was about to go away. <laughs> <laughs> this is the reason why, but uh, that's neither here nor there. Um, so, yeah, this episode is really going to be geared, I'm going to say geared toward entrepreneurs, but really, I think this is anything, anything in life that that can help anything in life that that what you're trying to do but before we get to that fred Mm -hmm. i had a very very random question okay i assume this would be short because i have no answer okay in canada i just heard Mm. that they are legalizing marijuana okay across the board okay if i'm not if i'm not mistaken Mm -hmm. if i'm a canadian christian Mm. do you think it's wrong to smoke weed Wow. Literally, I had no idea that you was going to say <laughs> anything close to that. But I'm starting to think that's a, this a little game that you like to play each episode. Like, what I just, can I throw? I just said, like... Just so I can say no. something messed up. Um, <laughs> do I think... Like, should I have a problem with that? Like, what if somebody was, like, a prophet? And, and they're like, hold weed. on. <laughs> well, Mother Prophet said, let me, let me get this weed real quick. <laughs> would you look at him funny? I, I'm be, I'm be honest. I would look at him funny. Mm. Like, cause and, and I, uh, maybe a big part of that um, is due to the fact that, you know, growing up, we was, we used to associate somebody smoking weed with a whole, you didn't, you didn't put church and weed together. Right, right. Like, like that's, that's the way. That's the way you know we used to. Um, it's, it, it is kind of weird. It's just seeing it's normalized. It is. Right. It is weird. It's, it's new. Mm-hmm. Um, so me personally, yeah, like if some if I, if I was if I walked into a church and it was smelling like weed, mm-hmm. um, and then I said, oh, you know, like, but then I found out it was coming from pool pit. Where? Um, that would that would like that, you said poop pit? Oh, oh no, nah, pool, pool pool pit. <laughs> I can't talk. Yeah. But uh, but but it would be. That would be kind of, you know, kind of different for me. Uh, but I don't know. Like, I don't know if I have a strong answer about that. Um, but I do think, I do think, look, I will say this. I'm going to put this out on the table. I've never smoked weed. Mm-hmm. So I'm not going to speak from experience. But from observation, I mm-hmm. would say. Anybody who... But from observation, um, I see weed could be a very addictive thing, mm. and it could be a very um, destructive mm, wow. thing. Mm. Um, Praise the republic. <laughs> you said what? <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no. It could be a very addictive thing. It could be a very 
It can be. You know what I'm saying? It can be a very addictive thing. It could be a very destructive thing. And it kind of almost reminds me of kind of what Paul said, is that um, everything is lawful for me, but not everything is profitable, expedient. Like So um, even... And I won't be I won't be a slave to anything. I'm not a slave to anything, you know, but Jesus Christ. So, um, so I kind of <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm gonna address what I thought happened after we finish. <laughs> it's okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, everybody. But I think I that's how I will look at it. I okay. am looking at it as you know, as a Republican. Yeah. You know what? <laughs> We just talked about it's not about parties. Hey, man, true facts. You know what I'm so, saying? So, yeah. but now that's my personal opinion. You trying to catch me on guard. What, what do you think? You want to smoke weed, Tech? Listen, before you got here, uh huh. Sucked up. Um, <laughs> no, I. You know what? I don't know. Like, I and that's why I think this would be a short time because I I'm so ignorant on the whole situation. I don't know anything about it. I, oof, almost. Choked on something. Um, I do think it's only a matter of time before it's legal in the in America. Um, so I think it's something the churches need to start to talk about. I agree. I think that weed has been villainized, right? So weed has a bunch of medicinal purposes yes, that are never talked true. about. But the only time it's talked about. you talk about it is like. You hear talked about it's like crime, blah blah blah. But there's a bunch of like medical benefits to weed. True. I do think weed was seen as a bad thing when it was only seen as a black thing. Then when our Anglo-Saxon mm. brothers and sisters started to mm. smoke weed, it became more socially acceptable. So most things that are, that seem to be, or that at were one time identified as a solely black thing, I uh-huh. think we're villainized along uh-huh. with African Americans. So uh-huh. I I don't I don't know if I can trust that. Even though with that being said, I don't smoke weed and would not smoke weed because I know myself. I have like addictive personality. If I smoke weed and it was pleasurable, I don't know where that would what that would end for me. I don't know what the, what that would look like. So, because I'm still working on balance in my life, mm. you know, I can get addicted to energy drinks. So, <laughs> we <laughs> tripping. Uh, so, well, can I throw something back at you? Uh-huh. You at me? So, like, so what is your? How would you react if you if you came across somebody in leadership, and you know, they were smoking weed. They were smoking weed. I would, I but mean, breaking down scripture. I would, I don't know, being honest, I would probably judge them, right? <laughs> but I don't know if that would be right. Mm-hmm. Because I'm judging them off of what I have been programmed as a child mm-hmm. to believe, from a child to believe, mm-hmm. when the doctor prescribes you worse things that are more addictive. So if I saw a doctor, a a preacher up there who's taking pain pills Mm -hmm. because his back hurt, I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't judge him. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, you know, it is, I don't know anything about it. Mm -hmm. I choose to stay away from it. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, yeah, I choose to stay away from it. I'm not really curious. Um, You know, I think, I don't think that it would be good for me from what I can see right now. Uh So I choose to stay away from it. Um, And I think the scripture that you mentioned with Paul is a good one, you know. It's like, you know, sometimes as Christians, we want to see how close to the line we can get. Uh Oh, weed is legal, so I'm just going to you. And so, but you know, why even try to get, you know, if cocaine became legal, would I then start smoking cocaine? Uh And not saying that weed is the same as cocaine at all, but uh, for me personally, because of my own uh, issues, I, I I don't I can't foresee myself smoking it. But who knows what life could be? Can I ask you one more question before yeah. we switch subject? You got it. Okay, because I think this is a interesting. 
Uh, so kind of tying in with entrepreneurship. Mm-hmm. Let's say somebody one came, one of the weed business. Yeah, like let's say, hey, hey, man, this is a lucrative. Uh-huh. Like, hey, do you want in on this? Like, would you would you hop in? I would, unless the Lord <laughs> and those who I hold myself accountable to mm-hmm. said something. Heck yeah, because mm-hmm. I think it is mm-hmm. and. Again, not making anything about race, but being an African American, I feel like Jack Af- has a shirt on right now with a black fist that's balled up. Everybody, <laughs> it's not black. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm bear on my shirt, literally. And so, because African Americans have suffered so much from the um, strong we lost, yeah, and and that has you know caused so many problems, and now it's legal, mm. and people are still dealing with the legal problems that were created from something that is now socially acceptable. Yeah. Yeah. I, you know, I think it's a business that I would love to see more than African, African Americans to get mm-hmm. uh, involved in legally. Mm-hmm. But, uh, you know, it's, it's from the, I don't know anything about it. So yeah. whatever. I, I, I just don't know enough about it. I just know for me, as of <laughs> right now, I can't see, you know, Mm-hmm. I don't think I don't think it would be a good thing for me mm-hmm. right now. So mm-hmm. um, I don't even know if I would try it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. I, again, I think again the Paul scriptures good scripture. Sometimes you can do stuff. It can be legal, may not be a sin, but it's like yeah, you know, mm-hmm. if a doctor prescribed it to me, because sometimes they do prescribe mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. Uh, that would, I don't know. Yes, yeah, because even right now with my doctors, if they prescribe something to me, I. Let them know, do not give me anything that's addictive. Mm. Don't give me, you know, because mm. they will. They'll slide you some stuff. Mm. It's crazy. Like, even with the opioids, a lot of people yeah. get, uh, get addicted from that from, like, they got it from their doctor. Yeah, yeah. And so even with, if I have a issue or even taking uh, anxiety medicine, certain anxiety medicines, they could be addictive. But I let them know, don't give me anything that would be addictive. So that is that is that just yeah. a r- random random thought. Like I said, good question. Don't really know uh, a whole lot about it. So mm-hmm. that is that. Yeah. All right. So, Pastor Green, uh, Frederick. That's okay. That's okay. <laughs> Green. I've, I've accepted it. Um, what I wanted to kind of throw at you today, right? Okay. And we've talked about this a little bit. It's like. We're in this great moment of entrepreneurship mm-hmm. within, I would say, our generation, between yeah. 18 and 35, mm-hmm. and maybe a little older. And so, uh, every, you know, not everybody, but a lot of people in their own, on their own business, yeah. everybody's trying to, you know, on the ground, everybody's mm-hmm. trying to build yeah. their own, you know, build a legacy and different things like that, which yeah. I think is good. Yeah, I think it's great, actually, and so it's it it, it is amazing, mm-hmm. and so but with that, just like with anything, comes certain things to look out for, yeah. and so I guess the question is, you know, what is the balance of trying to build something? You know, and I, I said this to you. Maybe there could be a better way, but the balance of trying to build something. For Jesus versus with Jesus. Mm. And so it's like, I know for me, if we're not careful, and again, I'm like a huge Gary V fan. Did you listen yeah. to Gary V? I, I did check out a little Man, bit. Man, I, I know you love Gary V. Gary V could curse me out. I'd be like, yes, sir, let's go. <laughs> let's get it. Yeah, I'm a jerk. I'm a nobody. <laughs> like, I, I, like, I love Gary V stuff. And so, and, and just even, in the past, maybe three or four years, mm-hmm. I became obsessed mm-hmm. with building a business, branded yeah. entrepreneurship, yeah. like just reading and consuming everything I can. And so, with that though, or with like even there are people who may be listening who are starting a church. Mm-hmm. And so, there's certain steps and things that you should do, but I guess the balance of like when you get. To, of like 
sometimes I know for me, I almost like tell God, you can have a seat. I got it from here, mm -hmm. which, yeah. which is, which is foolish. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I guess the, the first question is we're just kind of breaking into this is, do you see the sudden rush of entrepreneurs and the uh, desire for people to be entrepreneurs? Do you see that as a bad thing? Uh, do you see any negatives to that? How do you, how do you feel about it personally? As a entrepreneur, you charged <laughs> kids to learn music. <laughs> uh, I see it as a great thing. I I I, I totally agree with you. Um, I do notice the um a lot of people, you know, don't want to work for someone. Right. You know, they want to you know start their own business with their with their passion, mm -hmm. you know? Um, so I, I think it's a great thing. I think it's a beautiful thing. Um, some negatives, but there are some negatives mm -hmm. that definitely come um, from that. <clears throat> um, I can't speak to everybody. So I could speak to, you know, from personal experience and, you know, little, from my point of view, it's just like sometimes you could get, Trying to chase that place or that that right. thing of mm -hmm. achieving that thing, you could get so tunnel vision. And to a certain extent, um, entrepreneurship to a certain extent evolves some of right. that tunnel vision type of uh, mindset and some of that um, self type of mindset. Honestly, right. to a certain extent, yeah. um, so it's very tricky. It's very tricky. It, it, it is very tricky it's because tricky. you don't want to. There are certain principles that do work, but you have to have. It has to be balanced. Um, it has to be. Uh, you know, there has to be. It has to be balanced because it, it could become very tricky. It's a very tricky thing to to be able to. A lot of times, to be able to achieve what you. Which kind of becomes another question, right? But to achieve what you want to achieve, mm -hmm. um, it takes a lot of sacrifice. It takes a lot of uh, tunnel vision, right. uh, leaving people behind to a certain extent, um, leaving important things on the side to a certain extent. Um, and it becomes a lot of me, 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 me. Right. Um, not like me, look at me, but definitely in this age that we live in with the social media age, which is like a, a, a great uh, uh, season that we're in now with technology and the access that we got to a lot of people. Right. Like, I, like we're here in Maryland and, you know, we can access people across the country, you know. Yeah. Uh, Somebody was listening in Alaska. Wow. Shoot. Shout out to the to that one person, to that one person. <laughs> shout out to you. So, so I mean, I mean that's that is huge. Right. Like how easy, uh, relatively easy for as far as far as getting your content and getting yourself out there. It's so easy to be a self right now self promoter, entrepreneur, self promoter, right. um, and that where it could become dangerous and definitely as a Christian, um, that could become dangerous because you could get lost in that. What you think? Yeah, no, it's true. It's it's such a huge topic, right? Because mm -hmm. I know, and you know, we've had this conversation, and I've had this conversation with so many different people mm -hmm. that I'm convinced this is happening. Mm -hmm. all across the world. <laughs> and that is a young, ambitious mm -hmm. leader mm -hmm. in the church, right? Mm -hmm. It's trying to get the pastor mm -hmm. that is over them to see that there's more. Mm -hmm. And then the pastor who's over them feels like all that more stuff is extra stuff that takes you away from God. Mm -hmm. So like right now, if you're a millennial, and I know it's people listening or going through this, because I have have heard, had so many conversations, so many mm. different forms mm. of this same thing, is that it's like you see that there is more mm. out there, right? You see mm. that 
you feel like the church is stagnant. You feel mm-hmm. like, you know, things are just the same and there's more that you could be doing. And so you may bring that up to mm-hmm. the pastor. You may bring that up to, to the leadership, whatever. And they don't see it. Mm-hmm. You know, they feel like that more, all that extra stuff is just stuff, like you said, that draws attention to yourself. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, it just... Uh, when I think about it, I think about it like, and this is a weird, maybe a weird way to think about it. You know, when <clears throat> David was going and he was getting ready to fight Goliath uh-huh. and then Saul tried to put his armor on David uh-huh. and David was like, I, I forgot what he said, but he said, uh, I haven't tried these. I haven't yeah, I haven't fought in this me. before. Yeah. And so sometimes, even though, it was the reverse because Saul was king and David was getting ready to become king. As a young man or young woman in your church, you feel like Saul trying to get your pastor to put on this armor, this this stuff. And they're like, you know, I can't fight with you. No, I'm good. Just give me a, a stick and a uh, <laughs> a stick and, and some rocks. And you feel like, yeah, that, that may work with, you know, Goliath or that may work that may have worked, mm-hmm. but this is the extent of it. Mm-hmm. So it's just, I know a lot of people that are going through that um, and, and having that conversation a lot. And it's just it's just the balance of like, mm-hmm. because the danger is you may never get there too. Mm-hmm. You know, um, the the scripture says that God has made us subject to mm-hmm. He's made creation subject subject to vanity. Mm-hmm. And I believe us too, you know what I mean? He's made you subject to chasing things that you may never get. Mm-hmm. So here I am trying to build this I don't know, the new Uber, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And then you die in the process, just like mm-hmm. the scripture that yeah. uh, I was thinking about that. Yeah. Hebrews. So, yeah. what scripture is that? Did you, Hebrews, uh, that you, is that what you talk about? The, no, the one in Luke. Oh, 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 oh. Uh, Luke uh, twelve or thirteen. Let's, yeah, let's look at Luke twelve. Once again, Fred Green is a Christian. He opted for the paper Bible. <laughs> no, he was like, no. you know what? <laughs> I like the pages on no. my fingers. <laughs> no, no, no. It's, it is well. All right, Luke twelve. Let me get this here. All right, Luke twelve. What verse? Uh, starting at uh, uh, we can start at thirteen. Thirteen. All right. Is that too far up? Yeah, no, no, no. That's good. Mm-hmm. Uh, now someone from the crowd said, teacher, tell my brother to divide the inheritance with me. But he said, man, who made me a judge or arbiter over you? Which is, you know, we're not going to get distracted. That's Uh an interesting reply Uh from Jesus. Uh, let's, yeah, actually, yeah, let's scroll down to verse can we, can we 15 first though yes sir and he said to them <laughs> like, no, he said to them watch and guard yourselves from greediness because even because not even someone i'm sorry because not even when someone has an abundance does his life consist of his possessions Fred green what speaks to you about that um is that you know um Cause it's it's not, I think sometimes it's not wrong, cause he didn't say, uh, possessions is wrong. It's just the it's just the the heart behind. I mean, for me, looking at that scripture, is you know covetousness uh kind of deals with the heart, you right. know, greed, you know, and you know I feel like Jesus was saying here is that you know if all you if your if your idea of my life is based upon of what I obtain here on earth, mm. then you missed it. Um, it's not, it's not about the abundance. Your life is not, cause it's not, uh, about everything that you obtain here on earth. It's not, it's not about that because, and then I, where we're about to go later, later on the scripture, he gives the parable about why that's such a dangerous thing. And I think, <clears throat> I think that's, that's, that's what kind of speaks. Cause sometimes in that pursuit, 
we were trying to pursue this thing, right. like this this business to get this business off. But uh, if if that is to pursue to the point that we drop so much other stuff mm -hmm. and that we forget God, right? Um, then at the end of the day, when everything is said and done, when our time has come, we're not taking necessarily the business with us, you know? So I, I think that's, that's, that's what kind of speaks to me about that uh, verse right there. Yeah, that's true. I, I think like, and we'll go on it. It just mm -hmm. reminds me of like, uh, even for, for me in my personal journey with this and Fred, you know, this like, I don't know when it started, but it, at some point, uh, you know, for those who don't know, I my big passion for most of my life was actually music production. Mm -hmm. And I was making music, and there's just always this one line in Kanye West's song, even though, okay, we're not going to talk about yeah. Kanye West. <laughs> but, uh, he, well, actually, I don't even know. I'm going to give the edited version, but he says, like, this line about, like, saying like, dang, are these people that much better than me when he was looking around at the other musicians and stuff? And so as a producer, I didn't think I was all that, but I thought I was enough to, to like, I, I worked to be at a level where I feel like I could compete mm -hmm. with those, but I was still, nobody was listening to my music. Nobody, you know was really paying me any attention, anything like that. And so it was getting frustrating that we were having financial issues too at the time. And so I don't know what it was. I think it was maybe uh, Malcolm Gladwell's Outliers. Mm -hmm. It was some book that I read that just sent me off. And, and it would just sent me off because the whole time while I was there, and this is what some churches do, too, but I was just waiting for people to come to me. Like I felt mm. like my stuff was good. Mm. So because it was good, uh, will come to you. The, yeah, if you build it, they, they will come, come. which <laughs> is not true. Mm. And a lot of churches do that. Mm. Um, and so when I found out, wait a minute, there's things that you could do to like get people to know, you know, mm. what it is, what you're doing, and who you are. Yeah. I became obsessed with the 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 difference that knowledge made mm -hmm. the difference that information made and mm -hmm. so long story short i just went on this like binge and started reading so much stuff started doing like staying up all night became i don't know if i was addicted to energy drinks but i was probably close to like taking crazy amounts mm -hmm. of caffeine mm -hmm. like a day like 600 mm -hmm. milligrams uh, and just like just drinking, you know, just staying up all night trying to work, trying to grind, blah, blah, blah. Um, and so one day, I mean, this is through years, but fast forward, I was home by myself. It was me and the kids. Mm -hmm. And my my youngest son, Noah, was laying on my chest. And my, my chest, like, dropped. And then it was like, poof, 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 poof. And my, like, my heart would not stop pounding like crazy. Mm. Like, it was insane. I was like, yo, am I about to have a heart attack? Mm. And I was at the gym wow. earlier, and, and I had, had a, a, a like, a, a pre-workout. But there was that was, like, so much earlier. That mm. was, like. Six o'clock in the morning. This was like nine. I I don't know how long it takes, but anyway. And it. Long story short, you know, I ended up calling Debbie. Like, you know, you got to come home, because mm -hmm. I didn't want to. I thought I was having a heart attack, and I didn't want to have a heart attack. And the kids thought I was playing or like dying in front of my children. Mm -hmm. And so, wow. um, I told Debbie to uh, ask Debbie if she come home. I told her I'm about to call the ambulance. I feel like I'm having a heart attack. I called the ambulance, freaking out. Um, and I'm not going to tell you the embarrassing story. I, I thought I was having the heart attack. Apparently the ambulance knew that I wasn't because they, they picked me up. They asked me, did I want to go? And I was like, yeah. And they picked me up. They didn't do like the woo, 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 
oh, I thought that's what Eminem's doing when they picked you up. They was just like stopping at all the red lights on cruise control. I'm in the back thinking I'm dying. But anyway, that was the first panic attack mm. that I had. Mm. And then after th- then I had like a bunch of panic attacks. Mm. And still to this day struggle with panic attacks and mm. anxiety disorder. Mm. Uh now I'm in therapy and I'm taking when I feel like I can't control I'm taking anti anxiety mm. drugs. Mm. And so I mentioned all this to say, but you know, all this stem from, among other things, how I was managing stress, mm. not sleeping, mm. not eating right, not taking mm. care of myself, mm. trying to to grind. Like I felt yeah. like, you know, if I you know, cause I I still work on nine to five. I'm still a dad. And so um that was I was doing that because I felt like, you know, that that's what I needed to do in order to get where yeah. I needed to be. Yeah. And all this is going somewhere. Because um, going back to the scripture, yeah. uh, I'm going fast forward. And I will say to you, let's go to, uh, actually, I'll just, we'll start at 16. And he told this parable to them saying, the land of a certain rich man yielded an abundant harvest. And he reasoned to himself saying, what should I do for I do not have anywhere I can gather my crops. And he said, I will do this. I will tear down my barns and build a larger ones. And I will gather in there all my grain, my gain and possessions. And I will say to my soul, Soul, you have many possessions stored up for many years. Relax, eat, drink, and celebrate. And that, you know, and not to keep stopping, but oh, do I have to sneeze? Hold on. I don't know if I have to sneeze, but uh, that's the thing. That's the trap when you're on that grind. Mm-hmm. You're envisioning a day where you won't have to work yeah. that hard. Uh-huh. So you're like, oh, you know, I'm just going to grind, 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 do this, do this, do this. And then one day, you know, things will just run themselves. Uh-huh. And so if you're not careful, you end up getting into a trap because when you're competing and where you're going, you're always kind of marching toward and fighting against future you. But future you won't ever be satisfied either. Uh-huh. So you're always like, uh, pressing towards something uh. and continuing on 20 but he said to me fool this night your soul is demanded from you the things which you have prepared whose will they be so is the one who stores up for himself treasure and who is not rich toward God uh, uh. and so it's like for me it's just like a reminder of like this this guy he built well, he wasn't doing anything wrong he's yeah. building these barns, uh-huh. but to store his goods to store his goods yeah. you know his possessions the things that he got, uh-huh. but he never you did you just don't know when you're gonna die, Mm-mm. Mm-mm. and and even that day, when I thought that I was having a heart attack it gave me a slight obsession with death it brought me to the reality like yo I could die. Uh-huh. My kids are young. Like, I would suck if I died. Uh-huh. And so it's like, as an entrepreneur or while you're on your grind or while you're doing everything you're doing, you got to be mindful of that, like, and it goes back, and I know I'm just rambling on, but it goes back to the vanity thing. Yeah. God has made us subject to chasing things that we may never get. Uh-huh. And so it, it it cannot only be about your destination. It also must be about your process Uh your pursuit must Uh be adding value to your life because if everything is just you getting to this destination you could die Uh and not get there then what would all that you know what would all that mean yeah Yeah. well your thoughts pastor green i'm sorry Mm. i i I, that's a that's a that's a great point um yes it's so important to to understand that you know tomorrow is not promise i mean it's cliche but it's like real yeah like tomorrow's not promised and uh 
Yeah, it's 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 a it's a it's a it's a it's a it's a dangerous thing because I'm I'm just thinking to myself though, like it's like tomorrow tomorrow's not promised. But then you you wake up, you wake up tomorrow. You're like man, I got I I got mouths to feed. Right, right, right. True. true. I, I I mean, so yeah, it, it does it does become it it really does become this struggle and this and this and this battle. Um, but I I think I think it takes a level of faith too, though, because like why you well why you in that process. While you're trying to achieve that thing, a lot of times throughout that process, you you think like, oh, I'm not being taken care of until I get to this destination. Right, right. But the truth of the matter is like during the process, you may not be where you think that you should be at, right. but God's been looking out for you that whole process. Yeah. Like you still, you still, um, you know, you, you, you pretty much, you good really. But sometimes I think, we get so lost and our eyes are so much on the prize yeah. that we truly miss the beautiful uh, process where God is doing the little things. Yeah. I mean, I, I think sometimes we wait for that uh, big thing at the end, like, all right, struggle, 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 and God's surprise, here it is. You won right. your grand prize where, um, you know, yes, there is a, there's hardships with the process, but there are things that God is doing in the process that we could kind of ignore mm. and and just and just walk past right. because we're so focused on that end game. Right. And it's and I think it's so important to notice those small things because that strengthens our faith that God is with us even in that process. Right. Um to have the trust, believe in that God is taking care of us. Because I mean I, I never really thought about this, but even in that parable that parable, you know, uh the guy where where is that? Uh, it says that his ground. He, first of all, he was he was a rich man, and his ground was pre- like God was God was hooking him up. Right, right. He, he was he was blessed. He was he he was all he was rich, and he was he had plentiful crops. Like God was hooking him up. Right. The part where uh he got lost, that he got lost in that he got lost in the possessions, he got lost. In, how can I? I need somewhere to store it. How can I do this or do that? And got lost in all that. And I think sometimes we could get so blinded by that end game and we we'll just lose sight of what God is doing. God is taking care of us. God, God is, even in this process, he is, he is with us. And due to that, ignoring that, and I speak for myself, or not realizing that because I'm so focused on this end game, your you could kind of forget the fact and you start to worry because you you come to this re, you come to this false reality like mm-hmm. man god is not you know god is not with me i'm i'm nervous i'm anxious i'm i'm sc- I'm, I'm i'm scared you know and because we're we're ignoring those small things we're ignoring the fact that we're getting up we're waking up um we're we're waking up with certain things like we're getting into a car it may not right. be may not be the car that we see ourselves having when we finally get that business right. but we're getting into a car you know what I'm saying? Right. Like little stuff, like little stuff like that. Um, and not so little stuff. So I, I think that's important too, just to uh, pay attention throughout that process uh, of striving because I, that is important. Right. Um, I, I, it is important. I, I think the process is important. But to make sure that you are aware, mm. consistently aware of God and what he's doing. And, and it, I think that's where devotional time, right. spending time with God um, is essential, is is essential. Accountability is essential. Um, I think that has to be, um, so you won't get lost because it's easy. I mean, it's so easy. It's so tricky. Right. It's so, it's, it's so tricky. Yeah, no, I, I it kind of becomes like a self, self, self-fulfilling prophecy to mm-hmm. like I think about my father mm-hmm. he wanted to be like a photographer mm-hmm. and he he didn't he ended up like going to the government and, so, mm-hmm. and I remember he's, uh, him telling us that he always regretted it 
Mm-hmm. And a lot of memories of my father, other than like on, on some days, like on the weekends, like we would go places. But a lot of times I remember him like always being in his office. Mm-hmm. And uh, like he was working on like sermons and different things, stuff. Mm-hmm. But he was like always in his office. He had his office. And I think what I remember, I feel like that's where he spent most of his time. Mm-hmm. And so for me, I I remember like, him saying that he re- he regretted not sticking with photography and stuff like that and really pursuing his dreams. And so for me, I want to be more, even more present. Mm-hmm. But in doing that, in trying to say, okay, no, I'm going to stick with my dreams. Mm-hmm. I'm going to grind. I'm going to build this, this thing. And, you know, so, you know, I could be at home with my boys and, and, you know, I could spend more time with him. In doing that, guess what I find myself? Mm. In my office, mm. doing my thing. Mm. You know, um, wife with the kids. Mm. And so it's like there's nothing wrong with it. It's actually no. good, the the pursuit and the, the ambition mm. uh, that is out there, you know, and everybody wanted to 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 do certain things but when i say the thing about vanity and we've heard this before it's not the destination it's the process or you know it's not but it's, you know it may be a cliche but it's not it's not getting somewhere that changes you it's chasing somewhere something that changes you it's not what it's not what you catch it's what you chase so like if i as an example if i was to say that I wanted to be the best husband in the world. Mm. I could never really be the best husband in the world. That's a vain thing to chase, something that I could never like grab. Mm. But the process mm. of me chasing being the best husband in the world mm. would change my marriage. It would mm. change the way I talk to my wife. Mm. It would change this, it would change the things that I do. So, so many people, entrepreneurs, whether this is like, you know, whatever your hustle is, whatever you're ambitious about, it's not you get it there that's going to change you. Mm-hmm. It's you, it's you chasing it. Mm-hmm. It's, it's what you chase that changes you. So I think we need to be mindful of, like, what you chase. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. like, what you chase down. Mm-hmm. I had an interesting question, but it just came across to me, but I don't know if it makes sense. That's why I'm kind of contemplating to that access. So this True. may make sense and may go nowhere. Okay. And since we're being honest, just tell me like that makes sense. No sense. It's not going like nowhere. Fred, what you talking about? <laughs> but I'm I guess the question would be like let's say everybody has like everybody we all have that that thing that we're chasing, you know, uh-huh. entrepreneurs. Um we believe like, all right, this is what I mean, this is this is why I feel like God, you know, this, this is this. Um, I I was asking myself this question. And I propose it to you, and I propose it to everybody out there. What if? How how are how are you? What is your emotions? And how are you feeling? If you never fully achieved that thing, in your whole life, you pursued it. Okay, mm-hmm. no, because I. The reason why I thought about it, I'm going to tell you what scripture came out, Hebrews 11. We don't have to necessarily read it. Uh-huh. But it was talking about Abraham and the other. Now, this doesn't directly correlate, but a little bit. Because it mentions how they all died in faith. Um, and how they all sojourned in a land of promise as strangers and pilgrims. Right. And how... You know, I'm just I'm just imagining, you know, Abraham, you know, there's other people in this land that God said, Abraham, this is, this is your land. Right. But his life was spent as a nomad, pretty uh-huh. much. In a land that God has said, This is gonna be your land. So he didn't that that quote unquote as far as that thing of saying Oh, this land is Abraham's land from that's recognized from all the other people there. Like that wasn't it didn't culminate to that in his lifetime. Right. I mean, he died as 
out from an outside appearance, uh-huh. he died as a sojourner. He died as a nomad. Um, so I guess that's the, that's the that's the question. Like, how would you? Is it that one? Is it? Is Hebrews? Where they they go ab- they go through the great people of the faith. Yeah, and they say some received their oh yeah, yeah loved ones from the dead. Yeah, yeah. But then at the end of that, it says, "But these still died without receiving the promise." At the at the end at of the end of that, yeah, and I think and all these more to, received not the promise. Yeah, all, and I read it so put context to it, uh-huh. what you said. And these all, having attained a good report through faith, received not the promise. Crazy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and having obtained a good report through faith. Uh, these have not received the promise, right? And so, and there's more, mm-hmm, right, mm-hmm. that he's saying mm-hmm, there, you know, mm-hmm, speaking mm-hmm. more in the context of mm-hmm, Jesus. Mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. I think the point, though, be to, to answer your question, like, what if that, what if what you, doesn't happen? Maybe. That's from an emotional standpoint, I, like, I mean, if you if you was able to, you know, of course this won't happen, but like you could look back, like it's all said and done, right? And you look back over, and you're at the end of the you at the end, and you looking back and say, I, you know, I, you know, Solomon was right. <laughs> A year ago, I would say, I don't receive that. <laughs> And I would say that I would feel like a failure mm. if that didn't happen. Mm. Now, I'm like, Solomon was right. Mm. And what I mean by that is, Ecclesiastes mm. seems to be like one of the saddest <laughs> books in the world. Like, mm. if you haven't read Ecclesiastes, read it, don't read it if you're going through, okay? <laughs> but, you, uh, you know, it's like... Solomon just is like everything is vanity. Mm-hmm. How does the good man die? He dies just like the evil <laughs> man. Like he's just going on and on and on about how everything is vanity. Time and chance happens Absolutely. to everybody. Mm-hmm. Shout out to David James. Yeah, Time and mm-hmm. chance. And so it's like I pay him now too. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, he got big butt. <laughs> so <laughs> it's like this thing of like it's just it just seems to be a real sad book. Yeah. I feel like Solomon has the the the, the ultimate revelation on life mm. that everybody's looking for, and that is the meaning of life. Like mm-hmm. trying to have a life mm-hmm. that has meaning. Mm. And what he sums up, what he how he sums up Ecclesiastes. Is he basically says, listen, the point of life <laughs> is to <laughs> please God <laughs> and to find moments of joy <laughs> and enjoy those moments. <laughs> That's all you can do. <laughs> please God, find moments of joy, retain those moments and you know, enjoy them. So, like to answer your question, at one point in time, I feel like if I didn't do this specific thing, like it was like if I did not become a producer, <laughs> that I had failed. Yeah. And now I just feel like I'm only one. I'm only going to chase things that change me for the better. Mm. I mean, I'm only going to chase things that even if I don't achieve them, I'll still be better just by chasing, chasing them. It. Um, Music, by the way. Sorry. <laughs> Shut up for Fred's classes. Fred's trying to get yeah, that's, that's, let's do this. <laughs> and so there's one. And then two. I think now I wouldn't feel like a failure because what I'm trying to do now is enjoy life more mm-hmm. in mm-hmm. the middle of the pursuit. Because mm-hmm. it would be times where I would be relaxing. And yeah. this is, you know, not going into all of it, but anxiety is basically like where your brain and your body aren't matching up. Mm-hmm. So like your your body is going through like threat mode and your Mm -hmm. brain is like, what are we freaking out about? Mm -hmm. And so they're not matching up. Mm -hmm. And part of that for me has been like me just 
always being at a high point of stress, mm. always trying to be go, go, go. Mm. So when I, would, when I would be relaxing with my family, mm. I would feel guilty like, man, you know. I should be grinding. I should be grinding right now. There should mm. be something I should be doing because I love them yeah. to build something for them. Yeah. But my new thing from what Solomon says is I need to enjoy that moment because mm. I'm sacrificing these moments mm. for something I can't even guarantee I'm going to get. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so, and it's a, it's like, uh, it's just the balance. Like yeah. you have to be, you know, if God has made us all subject to vanity, and I say it all the time, and you can't control, you know, you can't necessarily control that God has made you subject to vanity. Mm -hmm. You are subject to chasing things that you may never get. We do it all the time. Mm -hmm. Some people chase pleasing people. Mm -hmm. Some people are people pleasers. Mm -hmm. You can never please anybody. Oh, my goodness. But you know why you do it? Because God has made you subject to chasing mm -hmm. things that you may never get. Mm -hmm. Some people... Uh, you know, like the guy who was trying to, who who's already rich, mm -hmm. but he's trying to save up more money. Mm -hmm. Well, God's made you subject to chasing mm -hmm. things mm -hmm. that that you may never get. We're always like, I'm looking at future me, but but right now or in the future, I can guarantee future me is looking at future me. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Just yeah. trying to see. Yeah. yeah. You know, we think that we'll get to this point where we'll be satisfied, nope. and so. If God has made you subject to chasing things that you may never get, the only thing that you can really control is what you choose to be vain about. Mm. So I'm mm -hmm. not going to be vain about pleasing people because I know that I can't please everybody. And in the process of trying to please everybody, that won't change me for the better. Mm -hmm. I can be vain about building the church, building mm -hmm. the perfect church. Mm -hmm. I can never build the perfect church. Mm -hmm. But if there's anything that I can spend my time to trying to chase, it would be that, you know, trying to make the church better mm -hmm. is something that, you know, I can build, you know, build or I can chase. And in that, I still have to be mindful to enjoy those moments, mm -hmm. the joy that life gives you because life is always, all, you know, always also going to give you tough moments. So anyway, to answer your question, I feel like now I would, uh, you know, I would probably, I would still be a little disappointed, mm -hmm. but I'm working toward, because my whole life I felt like, and I'm just being honest, yeah, to live a regular life, like a nine to five, mm. whack, mm. whack. Mm. I hate the, the uh, I mean, okay. I hate the, the, <laughs> the nine to five life that I live right now. <laughs> hate it. Mm. Whack. Mm. Mm. You know, if God forbid this that mm. this nine to five life was my rest of my life, yeah, whack, yeah, you know what I mean. But part this is therapy coming. Mm -hmm. Part of being in therapy, I learned that I'm a control freak. Mm -hmm. Who knew? Mm -hmm. And so uh, I knew too. <laughs> I was joking. I was just joking. I, was just I knew you were. Uh, <laughs> I can't control it. Mm -hmm. You know, I can't control. But in my mind, there's part of me, like, when I just said I can't control that, mm -hmm. a little man inside of me said, yes, you can. You just got to grind. You just got to do this. So it's still there. Yeah, like, it's yeah, still like, yeah. no, you can't, dude. Yeah. And so, no, you know, no one's saying you should work hard. You should mm. be diligent. But you have to be mm. mindful mm. to chase things mm. that change you for the better. Mm. Versus, because you may never, you may never reach that finish line. Because mm -hmm. you're going to die chasing something. Most people mm -hmm. will die um, chasing something. You know, um, James says, I don't know what, I know James doesn't say next week. But he mm -hmm. says, you know, don't say, I'll do this later. Yeah. I'll do this then. Mm -hmm. Because you don't know. You may not be know. here. You, uh -huh. But you should say, if by mm -hmm. the will of God, mm -hmm. you know. And so it's this thing of like tomorrow is an assumption. Yeah. The plans that you have tomorrow for your business to do this, 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 and grind, 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 and you're assuming that mm. tomorrow won't come. You're assuming that, God forbid, you won't die in a car accident. Mm. You're assuming that, you know, something won't happen. You know, yeah. assuming that Jesus won't come back. Yeah. And so you have to have something to show today. Mm. You know what I mean? Or, you know, what do you have? 
today to show and just enjoying those moments in life. Um, I feel like you just got to have a uh-huh. fair mixture. Yeah. If that makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. A lot of sense. Yeah. I think, too, though, like, even when it comes to building a church and even going back on to, like, doing something for Jesus or with Jesus. Uh And I know people may be struggling, like, what does that mean? Uh I know for me, again, when when it comes to, like, doing things, but I just get, like, what if, and I guess I can ask you this, Fred Green, like, what would you say your goals are in life, ministry-wise? I mean, you're a pastor. I'm not a pastor, but man, you 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 just drop questions. Uh, you know, I'm 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 honestly still I have an idea, but I'm honestly still praying about that. I'm like in a uh transitional season. I'm in a season of you know praying about exactly who, uh where God wants me to go immediately. What do you think? Um. I know one definitely, you know, I have a heart for teaching. Obviously, I'm a piano teacher, but just teaching about, uh, I just love teaching. And from a a ministry perspective, I love, I love taking the word. Mm -hmm. Uh, My my uncle, um, uh, uh, he passed away now, but he was the uh, founder of, Word of Life Church, and he used to say something as a kid. I always remember it. It's like taking the cookie, taking the cookie jar off the top shelf, mm-hmm. meaning you know, making something that is so high and lofty, and well, not high and lofty, but high and complicated, and just bringing it down right. and just making mm-hmm. it simple. And that always stuck with me, and and that's what I feel like. You know, like I, I have a passion for that. Just taking something that. Uh, uh, you know, scriptures and um, just things that you know someone may read or may not have a sh- understanding about, or just like, man, what does that mean? But just bringing it and relating it to people. So, could you see yourself doing that on a regular basis? I can, like every Sunday. <laughs> Look, we're gonna go here. So, I I, I kind of mentioned, oh, we don't have to go here because I we, we, we went there on another <laughs> podcast. I, 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 I could see, I could, I could see myself doing it every Sunday, but not from a pastor. Or, or I mean, again, the Lord had to tap me on the shoulder. Um, I mean, I know that sounds, you know, judge me, judge me, okay? <laughs> judge me. but, uh, judge but, um, but I, 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 for me personally, I don't see it from a pastoral, and I, I guess maybe, maybe there's a strictly me thing because you know pastors have such a hard. I mean, it's it's a responsibility, right? Because you're caring for like. Like it's a like a congregation of people with stuff, right? And and it's it's a lot. It's it's a it's a lot. And I don't I don't know. I I just don't. But from a from from that aspect, as far as from a teaching aspect, as far as taking scripture, like like something like a Bible study, right? That's the type of stuff I love. Okay, I forgot why I asked you that. Yeah, I was like, why? Why? No, I I guess. (laughs) I, I, I guess to this point, like, being honest, mm-hmm. what would success look look like for you in that Bible study? Me being honest, and it's me personally. Uh-huh. Uh, success would look like for me uh, is people under- How many? Sorry. Actually, honestly, if I would be real, I don't have like a. I, I put it this way: I don't have a a number. Like it's like I don't. I don't see like a high number, but I would be. I, I would if it was just one person. Mm-hmm. I would feel like, oh man, God, is this man? Is this is this where is <laughs> you know? Mm-hmm. So not one, but I definitely don't have like a number of like, like man, I'm looking. Uh, 
30, 40, you know, I'm not, I'm, it's not like that, but one, it makes, it does make me feel. So I don't have a certain number, if that makes sense. So can I test this theory? This may not. Okay. This could be a waste of time. Okay. Would two people make you feel that? Two, as far as successful? Yeah, with two people, would you feel like? Um, If I'm being honest, if if two people was coming to Bible studies uh, consistently and they were growing, um, I put it this way, I would feel successful, but if, if it was like a comparison to like more people uh-huh. with the same chemical consistency and growing, I think the comparison, I would feel more success with the more people than with the two people. But at what point, so, but if it was just two, mm-hmm. you would feel satisfied. You wouldn't feel like. Yeah, I, 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 would, I would feel and satisfied. And you could do that, you could minister to those two people for the rest of your life and not feel like, man, I need to pass out flies or nobody's really coming to a Bible study. I'm thinking about myself. I think, I think I would be content and satisfied. Mm-hmm. But I think, I think, and this is a little bit honesty aside, me personally, mm-hmm. I I do struggle with, uh, uh, like, what are people thinking sometimes? Mm-hmm. So, like, I feel like in that situation, now I'm probably looking more deeper into this hypothetical question. <laughs> than I, than, but I'm, I'm just trying to give you an honest answer. Mm-hmm. So if, I think what would, I would, that th- there will be a place where I will be driving to get more people, but it would be, it wouldn't be out of me. It would just feel, be out of, a, you know, like, man, people know I got this Bible study. I only got two people coming. Uh-huh. Uh, you know, I mean, these two people are growing, but you know, with people, you know, so I think that if if I were to branch out or try to do something, it'd probably be more so of the illusion that I created in my own brain. Um, almost remind me of that parable, not to bring about the parable, but like he was talking to himself, the parable of the man, the uh-huh. he, he kept saying that he was saying to himself, uh-huh. saying to himself. I think a lot of things it will be coming, like me talking to. <laughs> creating this storyline that's not happening and then therefore but that's that's the answer i probably no i, I it, think it makes sense so because it's like and and i guess this part will be for like there are new pastors mm-hmm. right there's mm-hmm. young pastors mm-hmm. who are building a church yeah and, and we don't say it like everybody you know we're we're so fake Mm. honestly mm. and so we would in our in our in your head you're probably like you know uh the you know i want to have this many people attend my church or mm. i want to you know i want to have this type of church with all these people and we go have all these conferences mm. and then you know if somebody asks them they'll probably be like oh you know whatever the lord said <laughs> that would be a blessing yeah. but then their mind when they're in their basement they're envisioning them at conferences and they got the cool church that everybody's like. And so it's like, and there's nothing wrong to desire that. Yeah. Right? Uh, it's good, you know, you want the kingdom to reach out to as many people as possible. Mm-hmm. But I think what we have to be mindful of in our ambition is like, it is, it is, if this is God's work, mm-hmm. It is him who brings the increase mm. and not, you know, we're co-laborers with him. Mm. Definitely, if you're speaking from a ministry or from a pastor or even from a business, you do the work that you know that needs to be done, mm. but you have to also trust God, mm-hmm. you know, and so... Um, Hit these last two scriptures. Uh, mm-hmm. Let's go to Psalms mm-hmm. 20, 20, 127. Mm-hmm. And I think I, I've, I've found the scripture. Oh, Fred, you give me a lot of scriptures that changed my life, okay? I don't know if you gave me the scripture or if I found it. My testosterone wants to say I found it, but you might have sent it to me. Maybe the Holy Spirit gave you that scripture. Okay. <laughs> yes, don't uh, do that. Okay. Got you. Got you. Uh, 
Please excuse my raspy reading. Okay, here we go. I'm going to read about Alexander Scurby voice. <laughs> this is Psalms 127. Scurby. Is it Scurby? I feel like that's a disease or something. Scurbies. Oh, boy, you got the Scurbies. <laughs> Maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> you caught the Scurbies. All right. The Song of the Ancients of Solomon. Unless Yahweh builds a house, his builders labor at it in vain. Unless Yahweh guards a city, a guard watches in vain. It is in vain you rise up early and sit late, eating the bread of anxious toil. When thus he provides for his beloved sheep, Look, sleep. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, son threw me off. I can read. <laughs> uh, let me go back. Uh, my Alexander Scurvy got messed up. Uh, it is a vain thing for you to rise up early and s- sit late, even the bread of anxious toil, when thus he provides for his beloved in his sleep. Wow. Mm. That's crazy. Mm-hmm. I, I, I never read it like that before. <laughs> uh, look, children. Uh, look, children are the inheritance of Yahweh, the fruit of the loom. Okay, no, that's it. They're, they're just that first part. Mm-hmm. And so it's like, that's so anti everything that we believe. It is. Like, I, you know, you know, it's a vain thing for me to wake up early and to mm. stay up late working and then Gary V said you shouldn't do it. You're great. Listen, man. Gary V's my guy, bro. I love that dude that I never met. Um, but it's like God wants you to go to bed. <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> And, and you know what I mean? Like, right now, mm. there's somebody up late. Yo, yo, I'm grinding. Mm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I'm getting sick because all I do is work, you know. And, you know, but this is, or you're certain pastors, you know, mm. who you, if you're, if you're starting a new church, you're like, nah, you know, I got to do this, I got to do this, do this. God wants you to go to bed. Mm. He wants you to go to bed. He wants you to get some sleep because unless God establishes this and does this what you're doing you're doing in vain anyway mm. and just like i said let's guard guards the city you guard it in vain anyway it's like your house mm. you know as a man you know you you are the protector of your house but it's situations you can run into in your house mm. where you know there's nothing you can do mm. you know if Six, seven, eight, eighteen people. I don't know. Come in, and you don't have no weapon, or even if you got one, and they all got weapons. Like mm-hmm. at the end of the day, you still a man. You know your house is covered by the grace of God. Mm-hmm. You know by His His mercies, and you play your part. But that's the thing: you play your part, and it, it, it even goes like it, it goes back to that thing of like Solomon, like you know. We are here to please God and to enjoy these moments of happiness. Mm. It's like we work to build mm. what it is that God is calling us to build, but you still got to go sleep. Mm. Yeah. And, and that's the thing, like the scripture says, he provides, and I, I feel like I may have added a word in there. Um, verse 2 even the bread of anxious toil, when thus he provides for his beloved in his sleep. And hmm. different translations may. What, trans, what does yours say? I, got, I think this is the King James. But it says, uh, it is vain for you to rise up early, to sit up late, to eat the bread of sorrows, for so he giveth his beloved sleep. And so either way, you look at that one. Uh, another translation says, "God gives those who He loves sleep." Like, 
And we have to ask ourselves as entrepreneurs, as like people who are trying to get stuff, and we don't want to stop and 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 self care. And that's mm-hmm. the biggest thing. Like, there are plenty of people who need to go see a therapist. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. They, I feel like everybody does. And there's plenty of people who need to just take a vacation and rest. Mm-hmm. But we're working like, no, 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 no. It's I got to do this. Mm-hmm. It is it's me. But this, but God is like, listen. Go to bed. Mm. God wants you to go to bed. Mm. And so it's, you know, I, I just think of, I it, it's a balance that you have to walk. Yeah. It's a balance that you have to walk. I do think, you know, I do feel for those new ambitious uh, preachers and, and uh, church startups who they're trying to get the older generation, the generation before them to see mm. all this opportunity is out there if they just went out there. And you should, you know, you should press and go out there and try to use the full range of resources that mm. God has given you. Mm. But in doing that, you need to rest. Mm. And rest, and not, you know, belabor and on, but like when you go to Hebrews 4, mm. And it says that the children of Israel did not enter into God's rest uh-huh. because of unbelief. Uh-huh. And the uh-huh. unbelief that we have is that if I take a break, this yeah. whole thing's gonna, gonna fall, fall apart. apart. God's not holding this thing apart. I am. Uh-huh. And if I stop moving, then this whole thing ceases to exist. Uh-huh. And because of our unbelief, we uh-huh. don't allow ourselves to enter into the rest that God wants to give mm-hmm. the people that he loves. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. What do you think, Pastor Green? Oh, yeah, I, I completely agree with you. I think um, there's a lot of scriptures about anxiety and being anxious. Right. A lot of uh, <clears throat> scriptures about uh, speaking about don't worry, you know? Um, but I think, yes, we do have a tendency to get into that place of worry because, I mean, the human the human side of us, right? We don't have, um, you know, there's, <laughs> keep bringing it back to life and circumstances, but, you know, like, you, you, you're dealing with stuff at the moment and you don't see, you don't have the, you know, God has, he's all knowing, he has everything. Right. We don't have everything, mm-hmm. right? So we get to this worry spot and to hear Jesus say, hey, but don't worry. God got you, basically. Like, um, don't worry. Don't worry. Like, you know, that's 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 very tough to do. Yeah. That's very yeah. tough to do because we don't have, we're not all knowing. We don't know our time. <laughs> we don't know when are we going to uh, come to that, achieve what we want to achieve, or if we will even. So, all of that creates this anxiety, but um, one thing that we could uh, that we hang our hat on is that, um, like what Jesus said, it's just like, look, do not worry, because your father knows what you need. He knows what you need, and sometimes what we want is not necessarily what we need. Huh. Um, and then on top of that the aspect of the relational aspect with Jesus saying he's your father, like, he, right, right. like the father right. side of him. Um, it's just like, you know what, but he got your best interest. Um, he, he got you, uh-huh. he, he got you. So instead of focusing your life upon, uh, in the, in the rat race or trying to keep up with the Joneses or trying to achieve this thing, Pursue, pursue him, right. pursue his righteousness, pursue, um, you know, but seek ye first, first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things and the previous things that he was mentioning were some of the things that we worry about, right. which is uh, where we're going to sleep, uh, how, you know, what we're going to put on um, our clothing. Like he mentioned those things and he came to the conclusion with uh, telling them like, hey, look, don't be like other people because the other people this world what they do is their whole life is uh their whole life is a, a circle around pursuing and obtaining things because of fear 
that they they're not being taken care of. But you do not like your father. Mm. Your father, hey, he knows what you need, and because he's your father, he's not gonna let you. Um, he's not gonna he's not gonna leave you out and dry. Mm. Don't worry, mm. he's gonna take care of your needs. Your needs are taken care of. So don't be like the Gentiles, or in this in this in this other world, uh, in this context, the the world. Don't be like that, but pursue God and His righteousness. Mm. And trust and believe that all these other things that you that you need and that you was worrying about, it's gonna be added to you. He got you. He's gonna take care of it. Now, saying that and walking that out and believing that, I think is that that's that's a struggle, right? Yeah. Um, but it that just because something is hard. And just because it's a struggle, that doesn't take away the truth and validity of what Jesus said. Right. So we have to uh, focus on that. And, and, you know, if you think about, even you think about Jesus, Jesus had a ministry, mm-hmm. right? He was doing a lot of a lot of things. But I love the way the Bible gives us a little peek into his life. He always found time. To separate himself and pray, he always had time to t- set aside himself. He always had time where he was just with his disciples. Right. Um, and I think uh, you know, and but he got a lot done, right? <laughs> yeah, he got a lot. I don't know why I keep saying right. I ne- I don't know where, but he got he got a lot done. That people' lives were being changed. Things were happening. But it wasn't in the context of, and, and 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 let me say this too, he wasn't just doing nothing right. at the same time. I think that's another balance too, because sometimes we go on the other spectrum of just like, I don't, because, because Jesus and, you know, I don't have to do anything, but that's not the case too. I mean, there are things and there are principles right. <laughs> um, that we have to, that, that we do follow. But there is a balance and finding that balance. And Jesus Jesus had that. If we look at his life, is that there was time where he was doing ministry, that he was walking and doing ministry work. But there was times where it says that Jesus separated himself um, to pray. And I, I think that's very important. I, I say this one last scripture. Um, I think prayer is very important within the context of the process thing that we're talking about. Right. Because prayer puts us, uh, prayer brings perspective. Uh, it brings perspective. Sometimes we get so wrapped up in our circumstances and our, um, man, we got lullabies. Bro, my phone's crazy <laughs> right now. Bro. But prayer brings pers- perspective. Prayer brings, like, it brings us to where God is and, what he thinks about the situation and, and and lays it all lays it all out for us, and you know it's a scripture that uh, in Philippians says, "Don't worry about nothing. Don't don't worry about nothing. But in everything, um, let your with supplication and with thanksgiving, let your request be known unto God, and the peace of God." which surpasses all oh, understanding, true. shall guard your heart and your mind mm. through Christ Jesus. So so I think prayer is another important tool that God has given us um, in, that, in that pursuit. And that's why Jesus, I believe that's one of the reasons why Jesus separated himself uh, is through prayer. You know, prayer helps us to get that peace to give us a different perspective because we could get so lost and running right. with everybody else trying to achieve something. Um, and when we take that time out with God, God's like, oh, you don't have to do that. Right. You don't have to be like that. I, I'm, I'm able to still bless you and you don't have, you know, just, just really quick. The type of, like, who God is, it's amazing, the God that we serve. We have to realize who God is. From this perspective, 
is that, like you said, sometimes we could think if I go to sleep, it all falls apart. Right. But God is a God of possibilities. Like he he could do he could do miraculous, he could do amazing things. And yes, we do play a part. I'm not saying that, but we have to remember, like, that's that's who God is. So God is saying to us, like, look, um, don't carry that burden on yourself. Don't carry that burden on yourself. Like, you don't have to do that. I got you. Go to sleep, like you said, you know. <laughs> go go to sleep. Go to sleep. Um, so I would say that, you know, I'll cut it off there, but I think prayer is a very important uh, part to your process because if the Lord is not, uh, you're you're in vain. It's it's, it's in vain. So it's very important for us to also, as we're leading or going through that process, trying to get to uh, that mountaintop moment or whatever, we just just, uh, keep it prayer, keep us centered, give us perspective. This is deep. Uh, two things that you said, like one, you know, even the thing, go back to the thing about prayer, right? So like a lot of us, if we're being honest, and I know that was the case for me, we say, I don't got time to pray, but we got time to right. grow, right? So mm-hmm. it's just a, it's just the evidence of what you, what you're more afraid of. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So it's like, and where your priorities are, what you think is really holding things together. Mm-hmm. I think, too, uh, the aspect of what you're talking about with fear, the difference between fear and faith in cases like these, because they look sometimes mm-hmm. the same. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you, a lot of times, you work nights, you work hard, you up because you're afraid. Yeah, And the difference is, to know if you're working in fear, if you're working in faith, is will you stop? Mm. Mm. Will you stop and rest? Mm. If you feel like you can't stop and rest, you're afraid. Mm. You're scared. Mm. You're working in your own power. Mm. And the scripture says, Psalm 127, God gives sleep, God gives rest. And that rest, man, you know, we, we use the sleep as an example, but sometimes you gotta take a break, you know what I mean? So that was a big thing, good thing that now that excuse me, Bobo pastors are taking sabbaticals uh-huh. and uh just taking breaks yeah. throughout the year. But like you gotta rest. Yeah. You know, if you feel like if you stop, it's all gonna fall together, then you, your perspective is a little a little off. Uh-huh. No one's saying the opposite of the extreme. Like you said, no one's saying don't do anything. Uh-huh. But if you're feel like unless I, you know, if I stop going at this pace for a second uh-huh. for self care. Mm-hmm. You know, be all for like you said to pray. Mm-hmm. You know, then you you're working in fear and faith. Mm-hmm. Both will make you stay up. Mm-hmm. Faith and fear mm-hmm. will both will will make you stay up when you don't want to. Mm-hmm. Will make you work hard. Mm-hmm. Will make you push yourself. Mm-hmm. But only one will allow you to rest, mm-hmm. and that's a you know a big mm-hmm. thing. Um, I just want to share this last scripture here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> First Corinthians. <laughs> Mm-hmm. And this is Paul. He is talking to the Corinthian church. Uh, apparently, you know, the Corinthians were kind of getting caught up in this. You know, they didn't have social media back then, but, you know, it would be the equivalent to, like, you know, I'm following Paul. No, I'm following Apollos. You know, I'm, I'm rocking with this dude. I'm rocking with that dude. And so Apollos, uh, I mean, Paul is kind of addressing this whole click thing that the mm-hmm. the uh Corinthians had has developed. Mm-hmm. He's telling them like you have something too. Mm-hmm. You have something too that God has given you. And you guys are just acting like, you know, you just regular people. Mm-hmm. Or you're just like fans, observers. And so he says something that's deep here starting at verse five. Mm-hmm. Let's go. Uh, First Corinthians three five it says, therefore, what is Apollos, and what is Paul, servants through whom you believe, and to each as the Lord gave. I planted Apollos water, but God was causing it to grow. Then neither the one who plants nor the one who waters is anything, 
but God who is causing it to grow. Mm-hmm. Now, the one who plants and the one who waters are one, but each one will receive his own reward according to his own labor. For we are God's fellow workers, and you are God's field, God's building. And so Paul has this aspect of like, we are working to fulfill God's vision. Mm -hmm. A lot of times we are working in hopes that God will fulfill our vision. Mm -hmm. And that's the other danger that you could be trying to build something that God doesn't even want. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, uh, I give this example. (laughs) I don't know. (laughs) Like, uh, Like, you could be you could be trying to build something that God doesn't God doesn't even want. You know what I mean? He, he's not even um and you could put your, your heart into it. You know what I mean? You could you could put your heart into it, but that is something more of a representation of what you looking for versus mm-hmm. God. Like I love tech stuff. Mm-hmm. You know? I love like future. I don't know, I love like Tech stuff and technical stuff. Mm-hmm. If I was building a church, mm-hmm. I would want it to have all the top technical stuff, mm-hmm. all the new stuff, laser, lo- mm-hmm. laser lights for Jesus. It's mm-hmm. for God. Mm-hmm. God might be like, I really don't, I really don't care about that. Mm-hmm. Like, no, I mean, that's cool. Mm-hmm. And not saying that God is opposed to it, right? Yeah. But people are losing relationships over people and arguing and, you know, being divided mm-hmm. and fighting over stuff. They, God doesn't even care about. Yeah, it's not even. A, it's not even a big mm. deal. Like if we're, uh, you know, I think about this example. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, that, I'm sorry, that's, my my brain is. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what is happening? <laughs> I was just thinking that. Never mind. But anyway. Uh, but like <laughs> we have to be mindful that we're not trying to to do something for God that He's just not into. Mm. It's like we're trying to get God a present that we would want. Mm. You know what I mean? You want to give me a present? <laughs> give me an iPhone, right? <laughs> God, I'm not, I definitely don't think God would like Androids uh, at all. <laughs> but you know, uh, maybe we can do the reverse. God likes iPhones. Mm. You trying to get him an Android? Mm-hmm. Because maybe you like Android. Something happened to you in your childhood. Something's off, and so it's like <laughs> we're trying to offer up to God a bunch of uh, a bunch of times things that are important to us, mm-hmm. but we miss His heart mm-hmm. and what's important to them and what's important to Him. And so, even when it comes to growing something, mm-hmm. so even with this podcast, you know, we had this yeah. conversation. You know, I, I want this, you know, personally, I would want this to be all across the world. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You know, I want the the whole world to hear. Mm-hmm. Shout out to the person in Alaska. There was another state that somebody listened. I was like, dang, we're going global. <laughs> <laughs> and so, you know, it's like, you know, we you want to do all these things to try to make it as big as you can. Mm-hmm. You have to do your part for sure. But then you also have to trust. I've not done my part. It's God yeah. who, who makes it grow. Mm. And for so long in my mind, I would say yes to the scripture, but my actions would be different. Like, no, it is me who makes this thing grow. Mm-hmm. I got this thing going, but it is, it's not. It's, it, is, uh, it is God. So, again, the entrepreneurial spirit, the, the big rush and the big excitement of new entrepreneurs that are happening now is a great thing. It's a great thing. It's amazing. It, it, I think this is like, you know, this would be probably one of the most memorable things about this generation that we had a, a righteous ambition. We wanted to do more for God. But in wanting to do more, we still have to understand that we are co labor mm-hmm. You know, you may want to do something. God may tell you to tone it down a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, of course, you have to make sure you're doing that out of obedience, not out of fear. Yeah. But you know, we have to remind ourselves we're co-laborers with God. The difference between fear and faith, in a lot of cases, 
mm-hmm. at all mm-hmm. is will you rest? Mm-hmm. Are you willing to mm-hmm. are you willing to chill out mm-hmm. and uh you know get some sleep, take a break, yeah. you know, take some self care. Yeah. Um, you know, and so I would just and we just encourage everybody to just spend time with God. And again, if you got enough time to air quotations hustle, <laughs> but you don't got enough time to pray, yeah, your priorities and that's me a thousand percent. Mm-hmm. Your priorities are, are out of order. Yeah, your priorities are out of order. You think you you know, you have more faith more faith in your ambition than you do God's ability. Mm-hmm. And so uh that's that is that is it, Pastor Green. Mm-hmm. Uh anything else you wanted to add? No, actually I don't have anything I you know wanted to add uh specifically. Um feel like if I were to try to add something, that would just be talking just to talk. So All right. sometimes stupidity comes out of that. So I'm not not, not from you for <laughs> Uh again. Now we're going to the growing part. It is God who brings the increase. Mm-hmm. Not these shameless plugs at the end of each <laughs> podcast. But if the Lord so moves you, mm-hmm. please subscribe. Whatever platform you listen, uh, we should be available on all platforms right now. Uh, please rate and review. Rate and review is a huge thing, uh, whether you like it or hate it, because what happens is people go and they see, oh, these guys are jerks. I like listening to jerks. <laughs> and, you know, and so it just helps uh, us. It just helps other people, helps grow this community. Uh, it helps us with the powers that be at iTunes and Spotify and all the places where the podcast is. So just take a second of your time, if you don't mind, to rate and review what is God who brings the increase. Um, follow us on YouTube. You can uh, we soon we should have the videos so you can see mine and Fred Green's pretty faces. Um, so that'll be up. But follow us on YouTube. We also have a podcast on YouTube, SoundCloud, every day. Join the conversation uh, with hashtag disruptive faith. <laughs> uh, uh, I, <laughs> and uh, I feel like I am beginning to follow us on Instagram, Twitter. Even though I'm doing all these shameless plugs, it is God that brings the increase. Amen. Praise the Lord. <laughs> uh, and if you had a question, you know, maybe we can start doing taking questions I think that would be that would be dope shoot us some questions okay Fred is a Republican did you know Fred is a Republican I'm not a Republican <laughs> yeah not that there's anything wrong it's with being a Republican not wrong Republican but Fred is <laughs> um and so you know shoot shoot Fred email I'm like hey Fred I'm just smoking weed and prophesying <laughs> don't judge me uh that's gonna be disrupted faith at gmail.com that's disru- sorry that's disruptive faith podcast at mm-hmm. gmail.com mm-hmm. don't forget that the podcast and that is it you guys have a blessed day have we will blessing. see you next time right about now yep. it's probably it's getting ready to be some type of holiday mm-hmm. so whatever holiday is close enjoy it yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know I don't know what, what holiday is there but uh, we will see you next time be blessed.